Hey, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we've got a very, very special guest on board, Chris Holder. You did speak to us last year, mate, but welcome back aboard, and we really appreciate your time. Joined with our gun salesperson, Marcus Washington, as well. How are we tonight, boys? So good, Tane. Thank you, Brett. It's good to hang out with you guys again. This is nice. This is good. <laughs> 12 months later, we're back. <laughs> wow. Wow. And here we are with, uh, yeah, more cases than ever. Here we, and here we are. Yeah. Same, same spot. Same spot we were. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? But uh, Chris, uh, we obviously got you on the on the um, on the on the talk and here to, to run you through. And I want to hear some some uh, things from you. What you've been up to the last twelve months? And um, I guess yeah, what things have you noticed, mate, during the lockdowns? And I know you've been in Noosa a bit as well, but um, we won't talk about that. Might get a bit people upset. But um, you tell us what's been happening. Well, I mean, I'm tucked away in a beautiful, it cold Melbourne, right in my place in Kew, and and it's. Uh, but I have to say, it's, uh, it's it's great to be back with you guys. I always enjoy catching up and just uh, seeing what's going on. First of all, congratulations to you two guys because you guys are ripping it up right now. And I, I know there'd be a lot of real estate agents that would probably be jealous of, uh, of, of some of the stuff you're doing, but you're working your butt off and you're making things happen with the existing tools that are out there. So um, so well done to you guys. Thanks, yeah, so thanks much. Mike. <laughs> well, it's been an incredible ride, and I and I have to say, I, I, I'm loving working with people, and and you know, just trying to help people get through this time. And and it's it's not uh, it's really interesting because I was in Queensland, I lived in Sydney for a bit as well, and I've been in Melbourne, just bouncing around doing some different things. But it, every state is so different, and you know, it's every state's experience of of COVID is so different. Every person's experience, and and even within Melbourne, there's people who have loved this time they were like they're introverted they're in their pajamas and they they got their cat while they're working and they're like uh you know they're like i love this man and then there's like you know others who have who've struggled obviously and who've suffered a little bit so um and i think either way however you know we've gone through this it's it it, it is it has been a challenging time that i think has taught us a lot and it's it's taught people a lot around resilience i think it's taught people around what's important to them um, I think the need and the importance to simplify your situation and really simplify in terms of what gets you results and what counts. And I know, Tang, you and I spoke the other day. You know, you guys have really worked out a system and it's a, it's a process which you can follow, which at the end of the day is, is, is not complicated. You've simplified it as, as much as it can be simplified and, and, you, and you've got your scripts right and, and they're working. So uh, that's exciting. Yeah, it's uh, it's been look. We've we've figured it out a, a while ago that um, you know, as soon as we get into lockdown, we've got to learn to sell properties virtually, and um, you know, and it's it's worked really well. Like we just got the stats; we've just sold or got sixty properties under contract in thirty-seven days. It's so great, man! So great. Well done to you yeah. guys. Well done. I, I look, and look, Tay and Marcus. I think you know the one the one through line that that I've really seen from people in this time is is you know it. it there's so much out of our control, and particularly here in Victoria, I think there's been so much that's just literally feels and can feel and is right to feel overwhelming. And 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 you know, I, I, I'm really opening all these when I sit back and say, point number one is to be nice to yourself. We this has never happened before, and and, and honestly, I, I don't want people listening to this to feel bad. There's I mean, there's people out here listening who have gone. Well, I've nailed this. I'm, the, I'm working more hours than I've ever worked before in my life. You know, I'm skinnier, I'm fitter. And, uh, you know, look, the reality of it is some people are not skinnier and fitter. Some people have not enjoyed this time. But however it's happened, do you know what? Today's the day. Draw a line in the sand and, and, you know, let's not beat ourselves up because this isn't, this, especially here in Victoria, it just has not been an easy time for people. And, you know, I mean, different people are locked down. Uh, with their families, other people are locked down by themselves. And, um, you know, myself, I'm in my place here in Q. I've got, you know, that's uh, 23 hours a day that I get to hang out, you know, by myself. And uh, when you get to do that, that's, a, you know, you start talking to yourself. You're like, hey, Chris. And I'm like, what? Am I talking to myself again? Um, <laughs> however, we're all going through it. I think, I think number one is to be nice to ourselves. I think number two, you know, right now that I'm really seeing for people is to create a routine uh, and whatever that routine looks like. And, you know, I know for, you know, some of you, 
some of you guys, that's that's that is exercise, but obviously from a business perspective, that that that's prospecting. And we tame, we talked about prospecting the other day in our conversation. You know that people are saying the stock level issues. It's like, well, they're not prospecting, and they're they're not working on their scripts. And they're not talking about how people can buy virtually. And you know, I think you know one of your great points about the fact people buy off the plan all the time. What are you talking about? People have been buying sight unseen for fifty years. Like, what are we what are we on about? Like. And so, you know, again, getting our mind right, just in terms of putting a routine together that actually works. And and what's the stuff in that routine that we want to get rid of? And what's the stuff that we really want to want to keep? And number three, I do keep saying to people to simplify. I think, you know, I think to overcomplicate things right now, there's only so much we can do. There's only so much I can do. And, um, you know, hey, look, you know, I'm getting the opportunity to speak to people. And, you know, I, I was probably a bit down on myself earlier in the year when I thought, I was there going, you know what? I thought 2021, in fact, I would have said it talking to you guys last year. I was like, 2021, boom, coming back strong. Well, you know, it just didn't turn out like that. It's just been, you know, cancellation after cancellation after cancellation. And, and you know, listen, it's not easy. And, and you know, you guys would have the same thing. Listings cancel and, and buyers pull out and, and, and you end up in this situation where you've done a lot of work to get ready for something only to have it change and, and, and cancel. So um, I, I didn't expect, you know, I didn't expect 2021 to be like this. But, you know, I really think as we look at it, and this is my number four thing I'm talking about right now is to have uncertainty acceptance and that we don't know what's going to happen. And we never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen, what's around the corner. And, 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 you know, I think when we try to create certainty, and it's going to be perfect, and it's going to be right, we get disappointed when it doesn't happen. And, and that's okay, by the way. I mean, I'm, hey, we've all been disappointed, and we all have the right to feel how we feel about things. But when we actually do just get conscious a little bit and actually start to think about uncertainty acceptance, that we actually get to a place where we go, hey, it's, you know what? Oh, I don't know what's going to happen next. But whatever happens, I'm going to be okay. And I'm going to be able to roll with it, right? So let's just take a look at the first four again. Uh, you know, just be nice to yourself, right? Let's create a routine that works for you, whatever that is for you, however that works. And then simplify what matters right now so we're not spending time on the stuff that doesn't matter. And the accept the uncertainty that's out there, right? Because it is still crazy in Victoria. I mean, now we're counting – most people now are like, I don't care what the cases are. Now people are like, where's the 70%? Where's the 80%? Right? Or whatever. Like, you know, we're just doing different numbers now. And it's, you know, and I think for some people, they look at that and they go, well, we're not going to get there till mid October. Hang on, maybe November. It's the first week of September. Right. <laughs> and, and so, look, I think for all of us to sit back and know that uncertainty is going to exist and for us to be able to roll with it. Which brings up, and actually, I don't mean to like number too many things. I don't have too much time, but I was trying to get as much stuff in here as I could. But number six, to deal with uncertainty, and this is most important, to deal with uncertainty, I really believe we have to be grounded. And I say we have to be grounded. We have to be grounded in a series of values that allow us to deal with the unexpected. And when I say that, I really want everybody to hear this because you know what? I really did feel like. Um, I was like 2020, you know, let's do it. Who cares? We'll do virtual. I did like 81 paid virtual gigs. I'm still doing my thing. But but you know what? I, I worked something out. I, I didn't have the same level of um, – I wasn't feeling very good about it, to be honest with you. And um, you know what I missed? I missed audiences, and I still do. But I missed – I, I miss signing books and I miss just applause and just general love from people. And, um, but you know, the truth of the matter is, as you look at all of it, I, um, I realized that I was actually going through and I was just a little misaligned, not dramatically misaligned, but a little misaligned. And I think, I think uh, what I really did work at is, well, I put together four values and I say four values I, I can't stand it. You know, I know you guys go to Marcus, you'd have been to those hard courts things where they're like, we're going to come up with the 22 values of hard courts, right? It's like transparency. Yep. You know, we got, uh, yeah, yeah, communication. Yep. That's a perfect one. Or, or you know, whatever. Anyway, I, keep it simple. 
And I, I came up with four, right? And they were very simple. Um, it was almost like, uh, you know, those president's heads in uh, America, that like piece of rock that's got those, the Mount Rushmore of values. Anyway, I came up with four values. Number one, fatherhood. I've got three boys. My boys are 20, 18, and 16. They're awesome. Um, I can, anyway, number one, fatherhood. Number two, service. This was a big one. And I think this is a big one for you guys, Tane and Marcus. I think it's a big, big one. It's around service. And, and you know what? I got to a place that I worked something out because I was feeling a little sorry for myself. I was feeling sorry for myself that I wasn't in front of 2,000 people and just getting love. Instead, I'm talking to myself at a computer screen. And half the time, I can't even see the people I'm talking to, I'm talking to myself, right? <laughs> Somebody asked me the question. They said, Chris, how many people do you think you spoke to in 2020 and 2021 to help them get through COVID? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Um, probably like 30 or 40,000 people, I imagine. And they were like, hang on, do you realize something? You're sitting here complaining to me about not having audiences and, and not signing books and not getting love. And you actually got a chance to help 30 to 40,000 people get through COVID. And most people are sitting around bitching with the same seven freaking people that they spend all day with just bitching about nothing. And, you know, it hit me. And I was like, service. Boom, that's my second value. Let me ask you, everywhere we go, we duck into the shell station. Let me ask you a question. Did you make that guy's day better or did you make it worse? I mean, that guy works at a freaking box. Are you kidding me? Did you make his day better or worse? You go to pick up your kid from kindy, right at the end of the day, and you go pick – did you make that that carer her day better or worse, right? I mean, she's there all day covered in snot and poo and crap. Like, God, like, did you make it better or worse? Service, number two. Number three, very simply, is freedom. And I've had this one tested this year in 2021 because uh, <laughs> I went to the Darwin Cup. I was living in Noosa, and I made the decision to duck down and see my beautiful children because it's one of my four values. And I ducked down to see my children after the Darwin Cup because Noosa was in lockdown. And uh, here we are. So, uh, you know, which is uh, is what it is. Um, but freedom is about freedom of expression. And freedom is about freedom of thought. And freedom is about freedom of movement. And freedom, most of all, is about, you know what? I worked something out as well, that freedom from judgment. And I spend a lot of time getting judged because you're on stage and you're American. That American guy on stage, easy to judge. Um, but I tell you what, I am, um, you know, just the release. And actually, I worked something else out during COVID that the biggest freedom uh, of judgment is actually the freedom, the freedom from yourself and judging yourself and actually being kind to yourself in that part of that process. And, and that leads me to my fourth value, which is fun. I just want to have fun. I want to be, I want to enjoy what I'm doing. I want to enjoy making people laugh. And I want to enjoy helping people and, and I want to enjoy spending time. And that's it. Family, service, freedom, and fun. The, the sixth thing is having values. And just to wind it all the way back up, you got to have the values if you're going to have uncertainty acceptance, because here's the thing. Otherwise, what happens is uncertainty, and if you're not grounded in anything, you get bounced around like a pinball on a pinball machine, right? You're getting bounced around. So, not, you know, when, you, when you're grounded in something, anything can happen to you. You're ready for it. You're, none of us are perfect. Stop trying to be perfect, right? Well, that brings me to the seventh point, actually. Perfection gets in the way of an outstanding life. It is not about perfection. And certainly, I have to say right now, there have been – there is so little perfection. Everything seems chaotic and everything seems manic and it seems uncontrolled. And you know what? Perfection is not about controlling everything, right? Because when you try, you're like, oh, my God, I'm trying to control everything. And then, of course, we can't because perfection gets in the way of an outstanding life. And the next thing you know, you're actually trying to control everything, but you're getting frustrated instead of actually truly controlling what you can control. Control the controllables. And where there is so much stuff that we cannot control right now in life, right? Except what it is that we are in charge of, what we can make a difference of, who we can really help, and, and, and look at it that way and start to think in that space. Very simple, very simple ideas for us to think about being nice to yourself, 
have mm. a routine, simplify exactly, you know, what it is that you're really trying to do and understand that, you know, we do live in a world of uncertainty and we try to control it. We try to own it, but we got to accept it. And we've got to, in that, when we're grounded in who we are, you know, they can't take that away from you. They can't take that away from you. Um, I don't know, some thoughts that I've just been jotting down. Guys, so, you know, as I always say, I throw some stuff on, on the refrigerator, whatever sticks, take it, whatever falls <laughs> on the floor, let it go. But uh, people are like, Chris, I didn't like point number three. Boom. I was like, okay, well, that's, don't have to like point number three. I don't need you to like point number three, right? Take from this what's going to make you better. Take from this what's going to ha- help you. And, um, you know, let's truly get out there with, with a whole bunch of energy. And, uh, but, you know, this, this idea of having this process and this energy and, and being able to roll with what's going on, I think it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. No, I think it's really well said, mate. Some really, really good points there. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's right. fantastic, mate. I think that was your first question. Marcus, did you have a whole series of questions? That was one. <laughs> <laughs> Really I, had a, I had a few more, but I think you answered all, all in one, mate. That was fantastic. And I, yeah, I totally agree with what everything you said. It's um, yeah, trying to simplify it. Like you said, simplify. Don't don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. Just just live. Just don't. Yeah. yeah like you said. Yeah, I think so. And, and um, you know, I, I think we need to we need to communicate with each other. We need to look after each other. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm for years and years and years. I've always talked about how life's a whole series of reliefs. And I and you can run with this however you want, but it's actually, you know, you're, 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 you're avoiding your prospecting calls and then you make that phone call. And as soon as you make that phone call, what do you feel? You go, oh, I did that, right? Or the doctor appointment, the blood test you're supposed to get. And you, you, I'm, like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. And then you do it and you're like, oh, I needed to do it. Like it's just things that we just constantly, you got to call your mother-in-law. You can't stand your mother-in-law. You're like, ah, and then you do it. You're like, ah, right. And, and I think, I even think for right now, um, you know, just talking to people, um, ask them a couple of questions and just let them talk a little bit about what they're going through and actually just watch their body language. When you when you open up and give people a chance just to say a few things that are on their mind, they, they actually go, oh. and you can just see, it's like, you know, we got to be there for each other and give each other those series of reliefs throughout the day. And, you know, I mean, it would bottle up and then, you know, so I think it's such an important thing, such an important thing. Talk to people. Be nice to people. Let's go. Love it. Love it. No, it's that's great. It's awesome points. I think that um, yeah, not stressing about the things we can't control, and I think that you know, switching off from the numbers on a daily basis and the things we can't do. Let's let's look at the things that we can do and try and embrace that that time that we have, because um, I think you know we will get back to that chaotic stage of life again before we know it. Uh, like, and we can't wait. But it's uh, but at the same time. We're ready to roll with whatever happens. And I don't forget uncertainty. You know, I know, I know we crave certainty. We want to know exactly what's going to happen. But, you know, the truth is, and, and this might be just something for people to think about. You are most alive in your life when you are uncertain. When you don't know, that's actually the moment where you're actually, life begins where uncertainty starts. I mean, you know, I mean, Marcus and Tane there, the two of you were like 14 years old, your little canoe. And you're like paddling down the river and it's pretty boring, really. You're just like in a river and you're just going even and just like it's all paddling. And then all of a sudden, you know, it seems pretty certain. And then all of a sudden, guess what? All of a sudden you hear the rush of water and you know what's coming. There's a little waterfall coming. Boom. And all of a sudden you look at each other and you got that sort of, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? That's actually when we're most alive. You know what? This is it. Uncertainty. Life. Life begins where uncertainty starts. This is actually the time when we feel most alive. And uh, so let's not forget to celebrate the uncertainty as well. Love it, mate. I want to get a canoe now. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Any, anything else we want to talk about? No, no I, think you, I think you, you covered time. a lot there, mate, definitely. And, um, you know, just I think some great points in there for people to, to look over and, um, and yeah, we'll send this, this video out to people as well as a link so they can watch it again and pick up a few of those points and um, jump onto Chris's website as well. He's got his, uh, his books on there. The Useful Belief is, I think, is a, is a great book that helped me get through last year and this year as well because I think that, um, you know, it's not a positive thinking book, that's for sure. 
it's uh it's definitely about useful belief yeah 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 awesome guys thanks as always for having me and um uh we'll keep we'll keep going all right good luck keep going guys thanks chris thanks Thanks so much mate